and everybody's talking about accountability today, especially in the world of politics. Everybody in the West and the democratic society is saying, well, you know, the government works for me. Power to the people, power to the people. And, and there's a great move to get the power back to the people and make the political heads accountable to the people. Now, there is a grain of truth in that, but the problem is, who are the people accountable to? You see, we want the government to be accountable to us, but when it comes to us being accountable, we don't want to be accountable to anybody. We want to do what we want when we want it. We think that's freedom. We think freedom is doing what we want when we want it. We call that liberty. I want to do what I want when I want to do it. No, that's not freedom. That's not liberty at all. That's sin. Because the truth is, everything we do according to the Bible, if we are believers in Jesus Christ, must be subject to the will of God. And to do what we want to do when we want to do it means we'll just run around and womanize, we'll run around and drink, we'll run, do whatever we want to do, not accountable to anybody. That is not the picture that the Bible paints for God's people. It's just not. I want to talk to you today about being accountable to God. Now listen carefully. What we do with our time and our money reveals who is Lord in our heart. What we do with our time and our money reveals who is Lord in our heart. Now you say, well, Rod, let's prove that with chapter and verse. Very easily done. Very easily done. Uh, in fact, uh, there are several apostles who called themselves bond servants or slaves to Jesus Christ. John was one of them. Paul was one of them. And, and Peter was one of them, calling himself a bond servant or a slave of Christ. Now here's what Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Here is the word of God. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind of servitude. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he would no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men. But he must live for the will of God. For we have spent enough time in our past a life, lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles or those who do not walk according to God. When we walked in lewdness and in lust and in drunkenness and revelries, drinkings and parties and abominable idolatries, in regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them and party with them in the same uh, flood of dispensation, speaking evil of you. And they will give an account to him, that is God, who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached to those who are dead that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit, serving for God's glory. Verse 7, but the end of all things is at hand, beloved. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all, above all things... Uh, have fervent love for one another, for the love will cover a multitude of sins. That's intense, beloved. That's intense. And so here is our first power connection. All of us have been given some degree of intelligence, talent, and resources, although some would argue I don't have much. How we spend them shows who we serve. All of us have a certain amount of liberty. All of us have a certain amount of free will. All of us have a certain amount of intelligence and talent. And the question is, what are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with God, with what he gave us? What are we going to do? And Peter says to the church, he said, I want you to hear me. He says, I want you to understand that freedom in Christ doesn't mean you indulge yourself in sin. What it means is you are free from the law in order that you may express the love of Christ through the principles of the word in the law, to not commit adultery, not steal, not murder, not lie, and so on. And so you see, the liberty of the law is that the principles are released in us. And so we must learn not to serve the law and not to serve the world, but we must learn to serve Christ. And in doing so, in serving Christ, we are what? That brings us to the second connection. Believers are to pay attention to our lifestyles and not be lazy in looking after each other. We are concerned. We must be concerned with others for Jesus' sake. 
We must not just go out and give money to somebody who's feeding children because it's servicing guilt. I call that guilt servicing. You know, you see a starving child on TV and you feel guilty because you're making, you know, fifty or $60,000 a year, which isn't much these days, but enough to where you can do some things you want. And so you have to service your guilt so you give to the company who's doing it. That's not good giving. We give because we love Christ and because we want Jesus Christ, not us, Jesus Christ. If we feel guilty, that's because... Uh, we haven't understood who God is. There is therefore thou no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who live not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. And so, beloved, as we focus on this, as we understand what we're talking about, accountability to God means, how do we live our lives? How do we use our resources? The intellectual, you know, the, in today's world of copyright infringement, everybody likes to argue intellectual property, intellectual property. Let me tell you something about intellectual property. God gave it to you. And freely you receive, freely you give. So, so get in the church and help people know God. Get in the church and sing songs and release it to the world. Cut it out with all this stuff. We will be accountable for the talents God gave us that we must give it in a way that glorifies Jesus Christ and doesn't glorify the bottom line. Doesn't glorify our names or our, this is a good one, branding. You know what? Somebody said to me, well, what branding do you want? I said, I want the branding of Jesus. That's what I want. Well, that's not very, you know what I mean. You don't understand. You're trying, you can't brand Jesus. Judas tried that. It didn't work. You can't brand Jesus. Jesus is Lord. He is going to be who he is, regardless of how you try to market him. So use your marketing skills and use your ability to aim the gospel message at other people, not for financial gain, but for the purpose of winning souls. A very big difference. Now, these are things I was just thinking about, and you should too.